Casey here with 911 Motorsports. In the previous video, we made the bumper brackets for the top tube of this bumper. In this video, we're gonna be making the top tube for this Bronco here using our tube jig like we have set up right here. We will be adjusting it until it fits right on the vehicle, then copying it to the final tube so that thing fits right the first time without any waste. So stay tuned to see how it goes. We have our frame plates all finished up and bolted in place. The next step is to actually start making this top tube. First, we need to get this winch out of the way because we're all done with this for now. Once we have a couple of tubes done, then we can bring this back into play. We need to figure out what uh, our distances between some bends are gonna be. We're looking about 33 inches, about 23 to the first bend and oh, 13 so 33 23 and 13 uh this is where i like to write down kind of what we're making here 23 and then 13. we're going to be setting up our tube jig and there's this handy dandy little chart i got over here probably this medium hinge with the long side is going to get us started there medium hinge the large the long side We'll be on one side, we'll set this up. We're gonna want 23 inches in between each. So that should give us, that'll, that'll give us a little playroom. We'll wanna mirror that here like this. Yeah, that's how we got that. In between, we want about 33 inches here. So just lay this out and then we can have, yeah, there we go. So if we, these long, large bases we can use over there. And so this, just like that will work for our center tubes. And then we can use these extensions here like that. This will be our main bumper piece. Now I just got to put all the pieces together. Get things kind of snug down once you like the way they're looking. Okay, we got our jig all roughly set up. Now we want to go fit this over on the vehicle and rather than try to hold this in position this is where it's nice to be able to have some stands like we got over here to be able to hold this in place and these are fancy ones here but this is just a simple little diy stand you can make with an old rotor you just weld a little washer to a tube bolt it on have a large and a small tube with some angle iron and these make real nice just fab stands as I like to call them to hold things for working on them to get started to see exactly where this is going to be wanting to fit. Start tweaking it to get it to fit right. Bends are centered there. Now we can kind of move our stand over, get our height set a little bit better here. This is where it's nice to do these tubes one at a time. We got the tube jig mostly set up and we figured out how this old Bronco is actually bent and tweaked too. So this is one thing with a jig that's very helpful is you can find how the vehicle is off and then also account for that and know how. So in this instance, centering on each frame plate and here, I realized that this distance here is a half inch longer on this side than on this side over here, which makes sense because this frame this frame horn uh i was looking at and seems to be bent this way in so what i'm doing is i'm making these two bends match the brackets and the outside match the fender and because this half inch distance here nobody will ever know that it is off because of how we lay this out and so that's one thing that also happens when you're working with older vehicles that have been used and abused. You want to make the tubing match the vehicle unless you're planning on fixing and tweaking the frame. In that case, you'd want to do that before you went and bent any tubing. You can see this is in line and we've got our one finger gap here. So this is the amount of room that I'm looking for with this. Now to finish this off, we need one more thing, and that's going to be finding the miter for uh, where this tube's gonna end over here. And so this 20 degree miter is gonna get me pretty dang close like that. 
Don't want to come quite to this. I think I'm going to come shy a little bit. That, our rotation like that. That's kind of what I'm thinking is going to look good. So now all I need to do is, is measure this distance and match it on the other side. And then this tube is done or the jig's done and we're ready to pull it off and start making a tube. Grab this guy and real gently go move it over to a spot. Uh, first things first is to figure out how much material we're going to use. And it's pretty easy just to run yourself a tape measure over here. We got our tubing cut and uh, then all of our numbers wrote down as far as distances and bend angles. The next thing to do is to use our uh, angle finder on our die to figure out where the tangent of our bends is. 12 degrees is our first number. And then... We just hold it on our die and mark those contact points. That's going to be the tangent of our bend. The next number we're looking for is 75 degrees, more or less. And same thing, we'll put this on the bender on our die and those contact points verify they're the same and that is our tangent point from the center of the bend okay so here's the center line of our tube we have marked and then we also already marked the two center lines of our bends over here is where you can see our tangent and this is where this is the distance from the center to this line our contact line is our tangent and then for our bender it's an additional three and a half inches to the start of the bend so so this is where we'll actually load this in our bender. We got our center line, tangent, start a bend, and we'll load this thing in. Grab our angle finder. Get a little more of a tweak. Oh, about there. First tube's done. You can set it on the jig to verify that you did everything right, which with these two bends is pretty easy. The uh, other thing I can do is make sure my center line marks. This would be a good time. If you don't like doing math, you could just eyeball that center line. Look, but I already did the math, so center line's already right. So this is going to be ready to bend. We got our tangent and our start point already laid out. Now we can go ahead and bend the next two bends. For those of you that don't do a lot of tube bending and don't think you'd want our full tube jig, there's always the uh, old school option of using a bend sample to find out what your angle is because these two bends are pretty easy to hit. And this one you can guess at, but you're, you're guessing is the problem. So we do have another solution and that is this thing that we like to call the bend attractor. And what this does is let you rotate to be able to find the exact bend angle that you're looking for. And then you can set this to be able to find the radius and the angle on the vehicle. And you're getting a lot better idea of where the tube's gonna land. The problem is you're still guessing here, but it's gonna let you get a lot closer. And once you've found that angle is when you can come over to this line right here is where the actual tangent of the bend is and mark that on your tube. And so that's gonna be an easy way to find the start of your bend and the problem though is you're still guessing so right here is the mark i made and right here is the actual tangent of the bend so there is a little difference that would be the problem with guessing that's a lot better than a straight guess with this but it's not quite as accurate as using our tube jig however our bend attractor is something that you can use in a, in a variety of different things, and this is a lot cheaper of an item to buy than our full tube jig. Okay. We've got our center line, tangent, and the actual start point here. And there's our bend. And 
now we got a tube. Okay, now that we're done rowing our boat, got them bends all bent, we can put the tube jig on top and see how we came out here. Verify it's looking good, centered, centered, looking pretty centered. And use our speed square to make sure this is all set here. And then now we can come over here and figure out where our, the end of our tube is going to go. This goes back to, I like to use the speed square like this. And then right there is going to be my cut point. So now I can make my cut right there and that'll be accurate. Okay. We got our miter cuts all done, tubes on the vehicle, and we did our final fitment to check our tube defender clearance here. And we ended up, our center line mark ended up on this side. So we were an eighth of an inch off from where the tube jig and our bender landed. We ended up being one eighth of an inch off. So not too shabby. It's looking good. We can go ahead and tack this thing down. And then that will be about it for this tube. Okay, and that's it for the top tube of this Bronco. Stay tuned for the next video where we do the bottom tube, which is gonna get a little more interesting because we're gonna have some really uh, long copes to have to make. But our tube jig is gonna make that just as easy as it made this top tube. So make sure to stay tuned for that video. Uh, like the video if you like it, add a comment if you have any comments or feedback, and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to speed with 911 Motorsports.